Hello, in this short video, I would like to try out the consensus platform that is advertised as an AI powered search engine for research. Um, I recently got another invitation email that says, hey, I'm really impressed with your channel and your content, especially with the focus on science and space. I don't know how much space stuff I really do. I think it's more electric engineering um, and EMC, but anyhow, um, let's give this platform here a try. So the only thing that I've really done so far is I've created a login and um, I've checked this one minute tutorial video. So I will log in um, and I will check and test this AI based research tool. As usual, um, if you've seen some of my other videos related to this with a topic that I'm very uh, confident and familiar with research that I do since uh, 15 plus years, electromagnetic reverberation chambers. Um, so this is also a picture here on the English Wikipedia article from our laboratory in Magdeburg. And so, um, yeah, let's ask consensus, uh, what is an electromagnetic reverberation chamber? reverberation chamber um, and how can it be used for radiated um, emission measurements and immunity tests. So I would say already a quite long, quite specific question and um, something that where, where lots of theory and also lots of practical knowledge should exist how to do experiments how to do uh, measurements there are also standards norms related to this okay so um, i would expect that it would show me some uh, research papers but obviously it already tries to answer this question and so it gives me a pro analysis, I would say, based on 10 papers, which is, I think, for starting point, not too bad. And um, let me enlarge this a little bit. So it says, as an introduction, a reverb chamber is a specialized test facility used for electromagnetic compatibility testing. And this includes radiated emission measurements and immunity tests. OK, it's repeating my question. Um, and it is. It is a highly conductive resonant enclosure designed to create statistically uniform electromagnetic fields. That's, that's correct. Uh, which allows for accurate and repeatable testing of electronic devices. Um, I would doubt and I would question the really accurate and repeatable because in the end it's not, it's a statistic, it's a statistic test environment. So, um, you always have this intrinsic field uncertainty there. So it, it's not super accurate. It's, it's a question of how you define accurate. It's not deterministic and repeatable. Yeah, it depends. Um, so I would also question this. I would say it's robust, but it's not really repeatable. Once again, it's a question of how you define this. Um, I'm not sure. So if we would check the Wikipedia article, um, there is no accurate and there is no repeatable here because many experts would agree that um, yeah, this environment is not super accurate and not super repeatable, um, at least on the standard definition of these properties. Okay, so key insights, it's versatile in testing, radiated emission and immunity, reciprocity nature, okay. Um, I think this is good. Accuracy and repeatability, we have discussed this. There are many sources for this. Uh, let's check them in a second. Then the, the, the more traditional, the more established test environment for doing these types of tests and measurements are anechoic chambers. So here, reverb chambers are advertised as an effective alternative, I would agree. Offering advantages such as lower costs, I would agree, shorter test times, this depends, I would say, effective simulation of real electromagnetic environments, more or less. Um, I mean, an, an, an anechoic chamber um, with no reflections at all is um, as effective in simulating real world environments as a reverb chamber where you have 
many in, in, in a very high number of reflections. So the real real life practical electromagnetic uh, scenario that you have is probably somewhere in the middle. Okay, one important aspect is field uniformity and Usually nowadays we would say rather validation instead of calibration. Once again, it's it's a thing how you define this, but there are for sure many old papers older than 10 years, 15 years that would rather speak of calibration instead of validation to check is there a sufficient field uniformity, is the isotropy of the field good and so on. Um, the, the derm, which is crucial for the test results, the spatial homogeneity, Field uniformity, okay. I think this is more or less okay. And some challenges, I mean, it's always good not to only discuss advantages, but maybe also disadvantages, challenges. So they, um, such as managing the influence of the equipment and orientation of the measurements, I would not fully agree with this. Um, match those of fully anechoic rooms. Yeah, so the problem is that for emission measurements, and this is not really clear from the sentence, but it's very, very obvious if you do tests in such chambers, is in a reverb chamber here, you measure total radiated power, and in fully anechoic rooms, you measure field strength in a certain distance. And so there are limits given for this, but there are no limits given for the total radiated power here. So you need to do some conversion between them, between the Uh, these measurements of emitted field strengths and this is not uh, not super straightforward because you need to have the directivity of devices and uh, you usually don't know your the radiation pattern and that the directivity of your equipment under test so yeah there is some challenge in comparing these results but the real trouble is not given here i would say okay and there's some short conclusion are versatile effective tools for conducting radiated emission measurements and immunity tests okay and the advantages are cost speed i would doubt this and accuracy also i would doubt this um, but for sure any coic chambers are the traditional environment and proper I would rather call it validation and understanding of the RC characteristics for sure are essential for obtaining reliable and repeatable. Uh, once again, I would doubt and question repeatable and would rather call it robust um, test results. But yeah, once again, as I've checked all the other AI-based research tools, it's not too wrong. Um, it's somehow okay, but it's from my point of view, it's not It's not perfectly on point. Once again, if you would just read um, the, the Wikipedia article on this topic, um, I would say you have more clue on or what this than, than if you if you ask such a tool like this. Okay, so there's some related research given. So what are advantages and challenges? How can it be used to improve testing efficiency? And how do reverb chamber measurements compare to anechoic um, environments? And these are, these are for sure interesting topics to dive into. Um, if you are interested in this, so I would, I would say this is, uh, this is very good. Sounds good from my point of view. Okay, and now we have some papers. And I think this is the basic idea of this consensus app that it does not hallucinate or confabulate sources, but that it gives you real sources from real literature databases. So these sources here are not included into the GPT and In, into the generative pre-trained transformer model, but they are really from a database. Okay, so um, David Hill, um, famous researcher from the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Boulder, Colorado. I've also met him a couple of times in my life at conferences and when I was a guest researcher there. So this is for sure a good paper on this topic. Um, quite old, but quite good. Uh, another David Hill paper on uh, reciprocity and um, some paper from uh, Wu. Um, I don't recall this one here, but this is also rather new. Um, very specialized on deployment of 5G systems. 
I would say um, looking into basic papers or related to this basic question here, I think already this is probably too special and also 5G is not a classical, um, even if it says irradiated emission testing for wireless protection or 5G systems, it's, it's not a classical EMC topic. Um, EMC is more related to, let's say, power electronics. Um, also, of course, um, radio frequency systems, but this is at least sounds more like a communication paper here. But okay, not too bad. Um, probably not one of the top five, six, ten papers that I would have selected. Um, analysis of repeatability, okay, maybe from 2010 from high voltage engineering. High voltage engineering is not a from my point of view, not a super good and popular journal to check for EMC topics. Um, yeah, but is the, the interesting points are discussed here. So what is antenna position, receiving antenna location and so on. Uh, workspace, we would rather call it working volume of a chamber, but okay, may, may, maybe. Um, testing investigations of antenna calibration factors. Okay, also a rather old paper from this mm, yeah not into too much into emc journal um this is this is here some real uh, emc uh, journal ITP transactions on antennas and propagation so this is probably a good paper but it's not antenna radiation pattern plane wave decomposition this is also very very detailed very very special um, has not so much to do with radiated emission measurements and immunity tests of typical devices on a test yeah so um this is okay this is what you need to know but uh this is no this one here this is already very special and the paper six is also very very special um this is sounds good crawford um some very basic very general paper uh, very old but still very good so this is definitely something that i would probably also recommend to a new colleague that would like to um learn something about this topic substitution method okay maybe once again this high voltage engineering um is some some journal some magazine that is uh that, that gets too much focus here from my point of view in this literature survey uh, this is some interesting thing for sure um from some conference apmc APEMC comparison of test results between reverb chambers and anechoic chambers, exactly the thing that I've just discussed uh, some minutes ago, and compact EMC reverb chamber design and construction. Uh, once again, some uh, conference paper. Um, I've not attended this symposium for sure. It, uh, it was at the time when I was still a student I don't know if I have the proceedings, but um, I know this author here, and this is probably also a good paper, meaningful paper um, for this. Maybe this compact, how to make it compact, is, is would not be my first question to ask for, but this is for sure a paper where interesting um, aspects and interesting stuff related to this topic here is discussed. So... Yeah, if I would summarize, okay, um, we, we got 10 papers. Five of these papers, I would say, are quite on point. Um, the other five papers are somehow related to the topic, but would would definitely not have been my uh, choice for the five most important papers on this topic. Okay, so this was, I would say, a general question. Um, let's ask one more specific question. Um, and this is also something that I deal with um, in my research. If we go into more detail, and this is um, yeah, the question of how can the stochastic or statistic, stochastic, electromagnetic field coupling to transmission lines 
um, be modeled, simulated, or measured. And so this is, yeah, some some already very focused topic in electromagnetic compatibility research. It is somehow related to reverberation chambers, even if it's not really into the question in the title. Maybe, but this stochastic electromagnetic fields is something that we have also read before here. Uh, yeah, statistically uniform electromagnetic fields is a little bit the same as what we have here on top. So um, let's give it a try with this one. Maybe I can, well, I will not export the results. It's maybe, it's probably saved somewhere. So let's see what we get here. And um, yeah, this is now, as said, something very, very special already. So. Once again, we get some introduction, we get some key insights, but it stops somewhere here. Um, ah, now, now it's continuous. Okay, so we get an introduction. It's a critical area in EMC and EMI. And it's once again repeating the question and it rephrases this a little bit, it a little bit and says, okay, stochastic are fields are random electromagnetic fields. This is a term that is not so com common in literature, but I would say it's okay. And it's essential for designing robust electronic systems. This is something that I would certainly agree. And this robust here is um, yeah, much better than the, this also, the, the, these tests are robust and um, it's much better than the repeatability uh, thing that we had before. Yeah, so, but here it means, okay, um, devices that have some electromagnetic compatibility that have a certain susceptibility against external fields that are resilient against um, external disturbances. Okay, and so now it suggest different met methods. Okay, we can do numerical simulation, Monte Carlo simulation, something that I have done and I would agree. Um, we could do something like polynomial chaos. I've never really done it, but I know that other researchers do it. Um, it's not really my specialty, let's say, but something that can definitely be done and it's maybe faster, but you have to put more effort into this method, let's say. Then we can do um, analytical modeling, we can use closed form expressions um, with arbitrary loads and ah, and okay, there's a paper of mine cited and let's check the other sources here. So there's also a paper of me and there's a paper of Paolo Manfredi, um, also a very well-known person in the reverb community. Um, okay, so then BAT equations are one way to write down analytical models also for multiconductor transmission lines. And so there is um, a paper cited of a former colleague of mine, another paper of our group, another paper of our group. Okay, uh, lots of citations from our group. Then we can do experimental validation in reverb chambers, uh, right? Even if this was not really in the title in my question, this is a very good suggestion here. Um, to validate these numerical models and we can do it with different configurations. Okay, I would I would certainly agree. Another paper, another paper, another paper, um, all papers from our group. Mm, I would say from my point of view, also other researchers have done interesting stuff like this. Um, there's only there yeah, we have, I don't know, 10, almost 10 papers so far, just one paper from some external group, all other papers so far, um, work that has been done here in Magdeburg at our chair. Okay, and there are simulation tools and techniques, something that uh, we have not done so much, but circuit-based algorithms, network-based algorithms, is something that we have also used, but not really this model order reduction, but it's definitely something that might be useful there. And yeah, this is some paper from another researcher, circuit-based analysis of uh, EM electromagnetic field coupling with non-uniform transmission lines. I'm not sure if this is really um, based on statistic field coupling. Um, for me, it reads more like it's just field coupling, but the line is, let's say, 
stochastic, it's non-uniform, um, not the field, but okay. And then do, 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 enhanced period length parameters. Um, this is once again something from my former colleague. Um, okay, yeah, and then there's some short conclusion. The coupling of stochastic electromagnetic fields can be effectively modeled, simulated, measured. Okay, and then it somehow repeats this, what it has in, said before. Um, and demonstrations, experiments in rework chambers are good or are crucial for validations of these models, ensuring their accuracy and reliability. Okay. Um, Here, I would say not too bad, not too bad. I would just, without knowing this, uh, I would question that this is really based on sto stochastic field coupling or statistic field coupling. I would say this is more, um, as I already said, for non-uniform transmission lines. And so let's shortly check the related searches. What are applications of this? Okay, how do they affect the performance in transmission lines? Okay, what is the performance of a transmission line, maybe signal integrity, power integrity, something like this. And uh, yeah, if we have stochastic fields and complex transmission line configurations, then it things get really, really complicated quickly. So um, yeah, this is for sure also some interesting question. And, and so now it cites all these papers. So a paper of mine, a paper of mine uh, from our group. Uh, the Paolo Manfredi paper and the, the number eight here was captures under EM excitation. Okay. Maybe I don't know this one here. So um, to summarize this question here, um, I would probably have also thought of some other maybe more suited papers here but um, for this very special topic here I would say the selection um, that are given here as the best 10 papers the most suited 10 papers I would say it's it's better than for the more general question that we had before um, still for sure it's not the 10 best papers on this topic um, so if you check literature databases if you do some literature uh, survey on your own and if you do not just read the title um, and also maybe the abstract and have a brief look onto the paper some of the diagrams uh, tables plots schematics and so on that are given there um, then i think you get a much 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 better Uh, introduction into a certain topic but as an fur as as a first overview here um i think it's yeah it, it's it's not too bad it's it's certainly valuable